Gary Monterosa with this week's edition of Still Crazy After All These Beers. And my special guest this week is a fella, and I know I'm going to embarrass him a little bit, I can't help it, but I've maintained you are one of the top brewers, not just in the East Coast, but throughout the country. You're not afraid to take chances. You've established a top reputation for yourself. His name is Brian O'Reilly. He's the head brewer at Sly Fox. Hi, Brian. Hey, Gary. How are you doing tonight? You know what we're doing great? Philadelphia is a remarkable beer town, is it not? It's the best beer drinking city in America, Gary. Let's talk a little bit about Sly Fox. Now, you guys have a couple locations, correct? We do. We have one in uh, Phoenixville, which is the original brew pub. And then we've got one in Royersford, which has another restaurant brewery, but also a bigger brewery there where we do the produ production. Now, you know, with all the different beers that you've come out with, you've become known as a guy that likes to experiment with hops quite a bit. And how did that develop? Are you a hop head? And uh, where, where are we going with this? Uh, originally at the pub, uh, we had a, a customer that dared me to brew a beer that was too hoppy for him. That became known as our 113 IPA. It sold really well, but I got tired of making it after a while. So I still knew that we needed to brew some IPAs, and I thought I could do something fun so I'm not brewing the same beer every time, and that's where the hop project came out of. So. And that's a, that's, that's a good point because um, brewers, I've always considered brewers to be like chefs. In many ways you are. But you don't always want to brew the same beer day after day after day. And you've, you've come up with quite a line of, of ales and pale ales specifically. Sure. This year we're doing pale ales for the Hop Project. So we have 11 different pale ales brewed with uh, each one a single variety of hops. And then the last uh, beer in that project, the 12th month, is our Imperial IPA called Odyssey. First of all, before we grab that, what am I drinking here? This is our Dunkel Lager which is also available in a 12-ounce can. So it's a German-style dark beer, not too heavy, just medium-bodied, kind of smooth maltiness and nice and easy drinking. i got to tell you, this is a clean-tasting beer. But yeah, of course. It's a lager beer and made like the, with the German Reinheitsger boat, very clean, simple beer, but very complex. And now what, what's, in this, what's in this large bottle? This is our Odyssey, which is made with all the hops from last year. Each single IPA was a varietal. And we took all those hops and made an Imperial IPA, which is about 8.5%. So it packs a punch, not only in hops, but in alcohol. Now let me ask you, there have been issues with the availability of hops. How has that impacted on you, if at all? It's impacted us. Our prices have gone up, and uh, hop prices to us went up. We had to raise our prices, but uh, I think we're, we're over the hump. Okay. Well, now we're seeing more of the crop coming in. There's a better crop coming in. There's also now the home hop grower starting to take over a bit. Well, excuse me, the home hop grower won't really affect what we buy, but I think that, uh, thank God, we had a good crop last year, and on top of that, growers are growing more, so I think we're going to do better and prices are going to come down. Never, never back to where they were, mind you, but it's going to get better. You and I both know the craft beer is still a major bargain. Yeah, I mean, world-class beer is very inexpensive. And uh, certainly everyone has to pinch pennies where they need to, but, you know, a treat like something like Odyssey is not that much money. Whose idea was it to can your beer? Well, we had, we had decided to offset the draft with some big bottles, bottle-conditioned beer, and we wanted to do some beers like this. And then we realized it was better to put these in 22-ounce bottles and the other ones in a cork-finished bottle. And so we had had that going, and then we... We were looking at 12-ounce glasses at the other thing, and we realized, oh, my God, the can thing would fit in perfect. So it was my idea, but also the owners were excited about it and supported it, and that's where, how it happened. So. And, you know, initially when we started to see an influx of craft beer in cans, I noticed people who said, oh, I don't know if I can drink this. You probably did as well, but I think we're over that hump, aren't we? I think so. I mean, cans are a great medium for beer. Uh, they don't allow any light, they're convenient, they're lighter. Um, so, and, and I think the old, old uh, folklore of the beer being tinny goes way back to the old tin cans with stitches up the side. It's a long time ago. So. Now, if people are interested in trying some Sly Fox beers, um, I, I know you're not national, obviously, but number of states. We're in New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. That's it. And we have the two locations, right? Yep, Royersford and Phoenixville. And I'll tell you, Sly Fox beers, I always have some in my fridge. Well, thank you. Got to tell you that. And, of course, you're a good friend and employee. Suzanne Woods has been on our show a number of times. She has. And she's a sweetie. She is a sweetie. 
Brian Sard helping us sell our beer. She does a great job. Brian, thank you for joining us. We wanted you on our show for a long time. We're glad we can get you. Thank you. And here's to the beginning of Philly Beer Week. Once again, the greatest beer drinking city in America. There is no one that can surpass our passion and our branding and all our beers and all our taverns. What a place to be. I'm joined by one of the top beer writers in the country, and this is Mr. Lou Bryson, the man with a laugh. How you doing, Gary? How you Lou, doing? I'll tell you what. If, if, <laughs> if you don't see Lou, you listen for the laugh, and you'll find him that way. I can't hide anywhere. You cannot hide anywhere. And you're here in Philadelphia. Well, you're, you're a Philadelphia guy anyway. Yeah, oh, right? I live, live north of the city a little bit, but I'm in here all the time. And Lou, you've won so many writing awards, and you've got a whole bunch of books out there, too. Yep. Uh, brewery guys did uh, New York, Pennsylvania, done Pennsylvania a couple times. We've got a new one out for New Jersey. So what's really cool is that you you follow a template with your with your writing, and you basically plug the information into that template. Yep. Uh, what I really did was I looked at a bunch of brewery guides, uh, tried to decide what was missing that I wanted to put in, what I liked, and I wanted to keep in, and start using. It. I've actually noticed a couple other people using the same template, but I don't care as long as the information gets out there. It's all about sharing and finding. I guess imitation really is the sincerest form of flight. It really is. It is. So the books then are Jersey, PA, and where else? New York, and Virginia, Maryland, Delaware. Uh, there's also somebody else actually with the same publisher did a Michigan, which is, it's a good book. Yeah. Very good. So yeah. you got a lot of books because you write for so many magazines and newspapers as well. Yep. All you do is spend your time writing, basically. Uh, not, not completely. I'm also doing, doing blogs. Uh, I've, got, <laughs> I've got three blogs. I'm, uh, I'm trying to get the... Uh, the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board abolished, which is kind of like tilting at windmills, but you know, a guy needs a hobby. And uh, and then I also have a, a new blog I call the Session Beer Project. Yeah, I, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, all the all the beer press in the last like five years has been all about these extreme beers: uh, big alcohol, big sour, big hop, big this, big that. Well, that's all great, and I drink them, but you know, you have two and you're done. When I go out for a beer, I want to go out for a beer and 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 a beer. And a beer, and a beer. So I started this thing to get some more press for beers that are 4.5% and, and under. And it's starting to work out. Actually, it's working out quite well. We got, uh, we got covered in the New York Times. We got covered in uh, Imbibe Magazine. They had an article on it. It's, uh, it's definitely picking up. You know, beer appreciation and brewing, for that matter, it's almost like a pendulum in some ways. I mean, we have the extreme brewing movement, which is still popular and is never oh, yeah. going to go away. But yeah. the ability to make a good session beer. That's tough. Because you don't, you, mean, you don't have a lot to work with, you, you know, and any kind of flaw sticks right out, because it's a, it's a thin layer of flavor, and if anything sticks out of it, you've ruined the whole effect. Now, tell us how our viewers across the country can reach you. I know you have a website, obviously. Tell us what that is. Uh, the website's lubryson.com. It's L-E-W-B-R-Y-S-O-N. And then if you just Google my name, my Google hits are ridiculous. I have Googled your name, and, and it goes on and on. There's page after page of Lou Bryson hits. <laughs> Um, but that'll also get you to the two blogs, uh, so so that's a good thing. We want to check out that new session beer project. It sounds very cool. It's working. We got to, actually we have an event here in Philly Beer Week Monday night at the the Tide House. We're doing a session beer thing. Sounds great, Lou. Thanks for joining us and enjoy your time here in town with the remarkable events of Philly Beer Week. Thank you, Gary. Always a pleasure. grab a bottle okay and I'm gonna go into a little soft shoe right now and uh, here we go shuffle off the buffalo here we go